My love for Sonic has dwindled over the past few years. A lot of the new games Sega released just didn't do it for me anymore. Fast forward to 2016, where two new Sonic games were announced. One of them was Sonic Forces, and looking at it just reminded me of why I didn't care for the series anymore. However, that changed with the announcement of Sonic Mania. Now, I don't want this review to be negative, the intro was just my experience with Sonic recently. Modern Sonic does not bother me the way it bothers a lot of fans, but enough about that. Sonic Mania is the revival of the 2D era of Sonic, and it is everything I hoped the game would be. Now, that's not to say the game is perfect by any means, but I want to start off with the positives of the game first. Just about everything was improved from the classic Sonic formula. The story goes back to its simple roots with Sonic trying to stop Dr. Robotnik from completing whatever evil task he's up to. However, the story is not the main focus of the game. The fun of platformers comes from the gameplay itself. One of the key mechanics Sonic is known for is using the game's physics to gain speed. You can gain momentum by curling into a ball and rolling down a hill. Sonic also has his classic spin dash. But he also has a brand new mechanic, and this comes in the form of the drop dash. After jumping, you can press the jump button and hold it to perform the drop dash. This is a great addition to the game because it allows you to keep your momentum going. I feel this is more useful than the spin dash due to the fact you have to stop and charge the spin dash to gain speed. Now let's get into the level design, which is the game's biggest strength and weakness. For starters, there are a total of 12 zones in the game. Eight of them are reused from past 2D Sonic games, while four of them are brand new with some elements borrowed from past titles. The biggest weakness of the game comes from the fact that eight of these zones are similar to previous games. However, a good developer can turn that weakness into a strength. The first act of these zones feel almost one for one of the original level. I started to worry the developers did not do enough to change things up, but my worries were quickly put to rest when I got to Act 2. The level design completely changed. While the aesthetic of the levels are the same, new elements were added to mix things up. Green Hill Zone Act 2 now has zip lines you could use to cross from one ledge to the next. Chemical Plant 2 adds syringes that change the color of the chemicals, which allow you to bounce up in the air. Stardust Speedway adds plants that you can jump across. And Metallic Madness allows you to jump from the foreground to the background. The four new zones are some of the best parts of the game since they do not rely heavily on old ideas. Studiopolis Zone is my favorite zone out of all of them because it emphasizes Sonic's speed. There are a ton of slopes, bumpers that boost you in the air, and a lottery machine that helps you gain extra lives. Press Garden is also another zone that takes advantage of the slopes. However, Act 1 slows things down a little bit by making the level more about platforming than speed. Act 2, on the other hand, uses springs and ice physics to propel Sonic forward. It's similar to Ice Cap Zone from Sonic 3, but it is done differently enough here to have its own identity. Mirage Saloon is iffy though, it gives a callback to Sonic 2's Sky Fortress Zone, but the level was never fun to begin with. Thankfully, Act 2 ditches the gimmick for some good old platforming. Overall, it's a decent level. The only zone I am disappointed with is the final zone called Titanic Monarch. This zone encapsulates everything that could go wrong with Sonic's level design. First, the levels go on far too long, with the last act taking up to 8 minutes to beat, even if you know what you're doing. While the levels do have classic slopes and loops that Sonic is known for, it also has things that can stop your momentum. The bosses are for the most part pretty easy, but they're definitely memorable. Chemical Plant Act 2 has you playing through a game of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, and Hydrocity Act 1 has you fight Robotnik using his own mech against him. These battles are fun and nostalgic at the same time, but the best bosses mainly come from the new enemies called the Hard Boiled Heavies. These bosses may have you fight a swordsman that freezes you if you get too close, a robot riding on top of a motorbug, because why not? Or one of my favorites is the magician that changes into forgotten Sonic characters from the Game Gear games. The best one in my opinion though is Studiopolis Act 1, where you run alongside the enemy who is firing a barrage of missiles at you. You have to dodge the red missiles while knocking back the blue ones, and the enemy's face is hilarious when you do. One element that could have had more effort put into it is the way you obtain Chaos Emeralds. The new special stages are alright at best, I mean they take a page out of Sonic CD's book and have you chase down a UFO to obtain a Chaos Emerald. 
but I hear a lot of people say that these special stages are the best in Sonic's history, and I just have to ask, why? The best way I can put it is that the controls are very similar to Sonic R, which is not a good thing. It controls very slippery and it feels like the characters are running on ice, when clearly that's not the case. To be fair though, it does create a good challenge, but this definitely wasn't the way to do it. The only special stages that I had trouble on were 4 and 6, and that was mainly due to the controls and physics. The music is a step up from past Sonic games. Every song from this game sounds like it could come from Sonic CD. The composer, T. Lopes, did a great job recapturing the magic of past songs, and in most cases are better than the source material, like Chemical Plant Act 2 with its upbeat melody. The crazy vocals of Metallic Madness. The new pieces also fit the style of Sonic, including Studiopolis Zone. The Western style of Mirage Saloon. Now, I realize nostalgia might be blinding me when I looked at this game, but I think it's a good game overall. The level design has improved over the original and fixed many of the issues I had, aside from the Sonic CD levels. Look, no matter what you do, you can't make me like Sonic CD levels. Overall, this is easily in my top 5 games of 2017.